welcome back to monthly medical lectures today we're discussing a pathology topic and that is an important one breast cancer or carcinoma breast normal anatomy classification tnm staging prognosis risk factors everything will be discussed let's begin we'll begin with normal anatomy of the breast and we know that breast consists of ducts and lobules it is a bilayer epithelium there is two layer of cells luminal cells and myoepithelial cells the breast also consists of two stromas and one is intralobar stroma and you can also find interlobar stroma two cells two stroma okay now the basic unit of breast is known as tdlu terminal duct lobular unit what is the significance of this most of the carcinomas arise from tdlu a little about the epidemiology breast cancer in females is number 1 in incidence and it is number 2 in lethality number 1 in lethality is actually lung okay so just keep that in your mind now causes of breast cancer they can be divided into two familial and sporadic i'll explain the differences sporadic are majority of the cases and usually presented in an old age and familial causes are usually presented in a younger age and it's a minority population of cases now what are the causes here what are the mutations again it is a germline mutations in familial cases and sporadic that is random mutations in sporadic cases okay so what are the germline mutations braca1 braca2 mutations in the p53 gene pten gene and chk2 check2 okay these are all tumor suppressor genes and these are germline mutations what is the most common sporadic mutation most common gene involved in that and that is p53 gene that's an important point keep that in your mind now let's talk briefly about braca1 and braca2 genes okay where can we find this gene and what are they cause we'll just uh, simply sum it up so braca1 and braca2 they can be found in 17 and 13 chromosome respectively and what does braca1 cause braca1 cause breast cancer ovarian cancer and braca2 causes what male breast cancer prostate cancer pancreatic cancer brca1 mutation breast cancer are usually medullary in type i'll explain this in the video in the final section so first degree relatives with brca mutations are usually very high risk patients risk for what they are having risk for hboc syndrome that is hereditary breast ovarian cancer syndrome so we need to do some prophylactic measures or risk reduction methods what are those we can do a bila bilateral prophylactic mastectomy you can remove the breast to avoid breast cancer but mind you your ovary cancer is still exist a possibility of ovary cancer still exist so we do what a bilateral salpingoferectomy also i hope that's clear now i want you to listen very carefully just just visualize this classification so breast have benign lesion and malignant lesion right benign lesion can be again divided into in situ lesions invasive lesion based on what the basement membrane is intact in in situ lesions okay in situ lesions are classified into ductal carcinoma in situ lobular carcinoma in situ ductal carcinoma in situ is again divided into comatotype non comatotype i will discuss everything just hear this now invasive carcinoma can be classified we just completed the classification of in situ malignant lesions now we'll talk about invasive breast carcinomas so what are the classification of invasive breast carcinomas this is just an overview so you guys get a brief idea what's going on so invasive carcinoma can be molecular classified or morphologically classified molecular classification is based on receptors you know expression of receptors and morphological classification is based on the morphological features and they are classified into no special type special type okay so what is an example for a no special type invasive lesion that is invasive i for invasive invasive ductal carcinoma and under special type we have invasive lobular carcinoma tubular carcinoma medullary carcinoma mucinous carcinoma i told you medullary carcinoma is associated with brca1 mutation right i'll explain this and every one of this so what i want you guys to do is understand the concept here under molecular classification i told you you know the, these are the this is the entire invasive carcinoma right so under molecular classification you can have B, er positive pr positive cancers and they can be morphologically represented as tubular or mucinous for example uh, you have both tnbc triple negative breast cancer and and morphologically they may exhibit as inflammatory or medullary carcinoma are you getting me okay 
So this is the great overview and this is very important. Please, please keep this in your mind. Now I will describe each and every one of these. We will begin with in-situ lesions. As I already mentioned, in-situ lesions are divided into two. That is DCIS and LCIS, rectal carcinoma in situ, lobular carcinoma in situ. We will begin with rectal carcinoma in situ. On proliferation, the cells resemble ducts. That is why we call them rectal carcinoma in situ. And what is proliferating? Luminal cells are undergoing proliferation and myopithelial cells are preserved, but they are reduced in number. Okay. So now let's talk about the types of DCIS. I already told you they are comodo and non comodo. In comodo, what happens? You can see the myopithelial cells and you can see the proliferating luminal cells. The luminal cells will be proliferating inside and inside and inside. Now there is an important concept here. You should remember that this is a lobule. Right? This is a lobule and outside the lobule is the blood supply. Therefore when cells grow like this, what happens? The central cells will not get blood and they will die. And when cell die, necrosis will take place and also these cells are secreting lot of substances and they cause calcification. So there is a central necrosis and calcification and that is the histologic appearance in comatotype central necrosis and calcification okay that's clear now let's talk about some non comatotype uh, like the name suggests they are solid cribriform like cookie cutter or they can be papillary or micro papillary what is the difference between papillary and micro papillary the presence or absence of fibrovascular core is the main difference between papillary and micro papillary uh, this, this is the fibrovascular core in a papilla Papilla is a finger like projection into the lumen, right? So, presence or absence of fibrovascular core is a difference of feature here. So, this is all about comodo and non comodo type. So, what are the important points here? Central necrosis, comodo is the major type. Okay. Now, let's go to another discussion of DCIS that is Paget's disease of nipple. After this, we will come to lobular carcinoma in situ. Okay. So, Paget's disease of nipple. Okay. So, what is going on here? Well, the carcinoma rectal carcinoma in situ cells, the DCIS cells, these cells are moving outside to the nipple. Okay, they are moving through the ducts to the nipple and they infiltrate the epithelium. You can see the normal epithelium. I have drawn the normal epithelium above. That is a normal epithelium. And what happens? These cells will invade into the normal epithelium and they will be presenting clinically as what? Due to the invasion, they will be presenting as erythema eruption. Okay, so epithelium is very compact. But because of the invasion, the epithelium compactness is lost. So, extracellular fluid ooze out and you are present with erythema and eruption. Right? This is a very rare entity and it is confused as eczema. But remember that eczema is bilateral and Paget's disease is a unilateral disease. Okay? That should help you out. Now, another important point here is basement membrane is intact. Okay? Keep that in mind. Basement membrane is intact. Basement membrane is intact in Paget's disease of nipple. In the biopsy, what if you do a biopsy? Under a biopsy, you get Paget cells. Paget cells are very large cells with pale cytoplasm. They are large cells with pale cytoplasm. One more point to keep in mind and we will end this discussion of Paget's disease and that is palpable mass. If the patient is presenting along with erythema with a palpable mass, mostly it is invasive carcinoma. If there is no palpable mass, mostly it is a DCIS condition. So just keep this in your mind. That's all about Paget's disease of nipple. Now that's all about DCIS. Now let's talk about LCIS, lobular carcinoma in situ. Remember, we are talking about in situ lesions. So in LCIS, the proliferation is in a discohesive manner because of discohesion. That is, cellular cohesion is undergoing a dysfunction. So who was maintaining the cellular cohesion? That was a protein named E. catherine, right? So E. catherine is lost, and most of the time it is an incidental finding, and there is no calcification in LCIS. Now let's talk about invasive lesions. So, invasive lesions, as I have told you, is classified into two molecular classification and morphological classification. We will begin with the molecular classification of breast cancer. Now, coming to molecular classification, what is molecular classification based on? Well, it is based on gene expression profiles. That is gene expression profile, that is expression of various receptors like ER, PR, HER2, K67. So, what is ER? Estrogen receptor. ER is estrogen receptor progesterone receptor and ki 67 is a marker of cell proliferation. I'll draw a table and make you guys understand this. So, luminal A, ER positive, PR positive, HER2 negative and a low or high value of ki 67 Now, luminal B, you should be very careful, there are both, bo two types of luminal B, that is triple positive, everything is positive and something similar to luminal A. So, what is this 
this subtype of luminal be different from luminal A, there is a very high Ki67 value in this. Okay, that's clear. Now, HER2 enriched. That is everything negative except HER2. So, HER2 positive cancer and they may have a lower high K67 value. And the last one, that is basal like, that is triple negative breast cancer, negative for everything. We call them TNBC, triple negative breast cancer. And they have a very high rate of proliferation. So, please keep this table in your mind. Okay, I hope you guys understood. So, please, this is very important. Now, pattern of relapse, a late relapse is seen in luminal A, a biphasic relapse is seen in HER2 positive and the early relapse is seen in basal like. So guys, ER positive, HER2 positive, triple negative breast cancer are the three major types of molecular classification. So ER positive, HER2 positive, TNBC, three cancers. HER2 positive have a early and late pattern of relapse. TNBC have a early relapse. And ER positive cancers, that is luminal A type, they usually have a late relapse. What is relapse? After the treatment of cancer, the cancer is coming back. That is a relapse. So, a biphasic relapse response is seen in HER2 positive cancer. That's the takeaway point from here. If we know the molecular type of the cancer, we can give the treatment. If it is ER positive, we can give anti-estrogen like tamoxifen, which is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. If it is HER2 positive, what can we do? We can give a monoclonal antibody against HER2 receptor, trastuzumab. And in TNBC, we don't have a receptor, so we give chemotherapy. So, Basically, good prognosis is seen with ER positive luminal A variants and worst prognosis is seen with basal like or TNBC. Trastuzumab is also called Herceptin, okay? Keep that in your mind. Now, immunohistochemistry concepts. To understand which molecular subtype is this, what do we do? We do IHC, that is immunohistochemistry. So, I'll just simply explain the uh, concepts here. We have two kind of receptors, right? We have ER and HER2, that is estrogen receptor and HER2 receptor. Now, ER usually shows you nuclear staining and HER2 usually shows you cytoplasmic staining. Based on the location of receptors, this staining pattern occur. Okay, I'll draw a diagram so you guys understand it better. So, consider there are two group of cells, one are ER positive, one are HER2 positive. Okay, so now I'll do immunohistochemistry and ER positive cells will show me nuclear staining. You can see nuclear staining, brown color. Okay, and HER2 positive will give me cytoplasmic staining because it's a cytoplasmic receptor. I hope that's clear. Now, we just completed the entire molecular classification. Now, we'll go to morphological classification of breast cancer. At first, we'll discuss the no special type of invasive carcinoma that is invasive ductal carcinoma. Three feature, only three feature to keep in your mind that is rate of tubule formation, amount of pleomorphic cells and number of mitotic figures. Just keep these three features in your mind. Now let's go to special type. We completed the non-special type now. Special type. I told you it begins with invasive lobular carcinoma. So now let's talk about invasive lobular carcinoma. Similar to what I have described already in lobular carcinoma in situ, here also the proliferation occurs in a discohesive manner. This dysfunction as I already mentioned is due to the loss of function mutation of E. catherine. E. catherine is coded by which gene? CDH1 gene. So keep that in your mind. E. catherine and CDH1. Now, discohesive manner. Okay, understand the concept here. Usually, they grow as duct, right? In a circular fashion. Now, between the cells, there is E. catherine. If E. catherine is lost, they cannot grow into a duct. They will grow in discohesive manner like a single file pattern. And this is why we call invasive lobular carcinoma have single file pattern or Indian file pattern. Another important point, it have a special metastatic spread that is carcinomatous meningitis. This is mostly bilateral and multifocal that is multiple foci of cancer in a single breast and this is most commonly presented as a primary occult cancer. I hope that's clear. Now let's go to other special types that is tubular. Here there is well formed tubules. Okay, that's all about it. Next type that is mucinous. Here the tumor cells are present in a pool of mucin. So this is a pool of mucin and you can have a lot of tumor cells. Okay. So this is the pool of mucin. And there are a lot of tumor cells in the pool of mucin. That is your mucinous carcinoma. Another special type that is papillary carcinoma. Here in the duct you can find finger like projection that is papillae and they have true fibrovascular core. So papillary carcinoma, true papillae with fibrovascular core. Another special type that is medullary carcinoma. 
what is this solid sheets of cells that is stroma is very less okay and i already told you brca1 causes medullary type of cancer and the cells are very large cells pleomorphic nuclei and increased number of mitotic figures can be seen in medullary carcinoma and an important feature you can find lymphocytic infiltrate in medullary carcinoma the final subtype that is inflammatory carcinoma present as erythematous and swollen breast that is pdd orange appearance it ha it have an ability to mimic breast inflammation that is mastitis so when you give antibiotic there will be no improvement so you should doubt a inflammatory carcinoma should be your differential diagnosis and it have a bad prognosis why well i told you it is a swollen breast pdd orange appearance why because there is blockage of dermal lymphatics due to tumor cells tumor cells are already in the lymphatics so metastasis right so it is having a very bad prognosis that's all about it so we just described the molecular classification we described the entire morphological classification we completed the invasive carcinoma now let's talk about tnm staging a very brief discussion on tnm staging of breast cancer so t for tumor and for not m for metastasis now tumor size t1 is less than 2 cm and t2 is greater than 2 but less than 5 t3 is greater than 5 cm t4 is divided into a b c d a for chest involvement b for skin involvement both chest and skin involvement is c and d for inflammatory type of carcinoma now let's talk about prognosis factors in prognosis factor remember that invasive breast cancer can undergo metastasis to the axillary lymph node or very distant sites distant metastasis is the most important prognostic factor now listen very carefully a patient is not having any distant metastasis then axillary lymph node is the most important factor again if the patient is already having a distant metastasis then er pr positivity that is a receptor character is the most important prognostic factor i hope you guys understood now let's talk about some other important prognostic features it can be divided broadly into two that is based on the extent of carcinoma and also the cancer biology okay so what comes under extent you can have invasiveness distant metastasis what about the lymph node what is the size of tumor etc in cancer biology the molecular subtype the histologic subtype rate of proliferation that is ki67 etc now risk factors being a female it is mostly seen in females 99 percentage it's in females then estrogen exposure early menarche late menopause that means more estrogen more chance of cancer nulli paras and the maternal age at the first birth if it is less than 20 it is protective then again hormones hormone replacement therapy is also a risk factor so i have discussed all the points that i have mentioned thank you for being here don't forget to subscribe and share the channel with your friends thank you for watching let me know in the comment section how you felt thank you take care